My name is Seti and welcome back to another Tips and Tricks with Apps Events and Acer. This week's video is a direct follow-up from last week's video on Google Classroom. Now last week's video, if you haven't seen it yet, it'll be linked in the cards at the top. And I would highly recommend that you go and check it out. Now last week we looked at the basics of getting started on Google Classroom. And today we're going to look at a couple more functions that you will be performing on a regular basis when you start using Google Classroom. Now the first thing I'll ask you to do is open up your Google Classroom. Now you can see here I have a Google Classroom and I have a number of different assignments all ready to go. Now the first thing you're going to do is assign this assignment. So I'm going to edit this assignment and now I'm going to assign it. Now in the top right corner you can see I can choose my students and I'm going to assign it to myself. Now I've already logged into this classroom as a student with another email account and I'm going to assign this task to myself. This way you're going to see how the interaction between the class teacher or tutor and the student happens. Once this has been assigned, let's go ahead and dive into our other account and open up this assignment. I'm now in my assignment and just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to submit a blank document. So at the top right, I'm going to submit a blank document and then I'm going to hand in my work. This is going to notify my teacher and then they get to mark and grade this piece of work. So let's dive back into our teacher's account now and let's see what that looks like. Here in my stream, you can now see that this student or that I have submitted this piece of work and I'm going to open it up. I can see all the students that have handed in their work and when I click on the name of that student on the right hand side, you now see what has been submitted. So let's go ahead and open up this document because it will look slightly different when you open it within Google Classroom. Now the left hand side looks very similar to the standard Google Docs editor, but on the right hand side we now have three additional tools. So at the top we have files, then we have the grades and a comment bank. Now what I always recommend you do is use those comments when grading so that you're giving constant feedback to your students. So let's go ahead and click on comment bank. Now what's really great about the comment bank is that you can save those comments that you are leaving to your students on a regular basis. For example, check your punctuation, check your grammar, maybe add some information. Well, those can go into your comment bank and then you can save time as you're grading. So you can quickly click on those comments and they get put into the document rather than manually typing every single sentence. Now this is a huge time saver and one of the main reasons why I love having students submit their work through Google Classroom rather than just sharing the file with me. Now once you've done all your grading and you've added your comments, go ahead and return this file to the original creator. Now how do my students join quickly when I'm already in the middle of my lesson or in the middle of a session? Well, you can display the classroom code by simply going to your homepage of your Google Classroom and instead of manually inviting your students and having to know their email address, you can display the class code. Now you can see it here in the top left corner, but what we're going to do is we're going to make it bigger. So when you click on this button right here, you'll see a much larger version of this classroom code. And you can even make it full screen. So when you click on that button one more time, well then you can see a very large scale version of this classroom code. So let's say that you have a one-off session or you have a little bit of time at the start of your lesson. Well, you can display this for your students to quickly join and you'll see that once they've done it a couple of times, it takes them less than a minute to join your classroom. And that brings us to the third tip that I have for you today when using Google Classroom and that is customize your classroom. Look at that header at the top and make sure that that header has that feeling of your classroom. Now you can easily create your own custom headers by diving into Google Drawings. So go ahead and open up a Google Drawing. Let's go to File, Page, Setup and select a custom setup. Now in order for us to have a good looking header for our classroom, we're going to want to choose 600 pixels by 300 pixels. Do note, 300 pixels is slightly larger than what's required for our Google Classroom, so it will have to be cropped afterwards. Now once you have this, you can start designing your header and then simply download the file as a JPEG. Once you have a file, go back to Google Classroom and then select Upload Photo. Now one power tip for those of you that are interested in making it even more interesting for your students, you can also upload GIF files. So if you have an animated file, an animated GIF, 
well then you can upload that as well and then that will become your header. So it looks as if there's a video playing at the top of your classroom. Now what I found really useful in my classroom is little moving elements that are not too distracting but remind your students of different elements in the class or maybe even different topics. So let's say that this week is all about Google Docs, well then they will see a little Google Docs icon appearing. If the following week we're talking about a completely different topic, let's say digital citizenship, well then they might see some tips and tricks float past in that header image. You can change this as often as you want and if you have the time you could easily do this weekly. And then the final tip for this week that is going to save you heaps of time is copying classes and reusing posts. Now Let's say that you have a class and you've planned everything out and you have all your assignments. Well, on your main page for classroom.google.com, you have an overview of all your classes. What we can do here is we can copy a class. Now, everything gets copied over, all the files, all the assignments, but not the students. So that means that you can get everything set up the way you want it, copy it, and then simply tweak it for that subgroup or for that group of students. Now the same can be done with posts. So let's just jump into our classwork page and let's click on that create button. Now you'll have noticed in last week's video I mentioned briefly the reuse post but let's dive in and let's have a look at how this works. So let's go ahead and click on reuse post and now you get an overview of all the classes that you are a teacher of. So you can first select a class that you'd like to find that post in and then you go and find the post that you'd like to reuse. At the bottom there's a little tick that you can use to copy files but if you don't want to copy any of the files and start afresh well then you simply untick that box go ahead and click on reuse and right there your post is now ready to be assigned ready to be published to your brand new classroom now i hope you found these tips for google classroom helpful if you did, make sure that you scroll down to that comment section below. Let us know what do you enjoy about Google Classroom, what tips and tricks would you share with your fellow colleagues that are just venturing into the Google Classroom ecosystem and also what would you like to see next on our channel. Now I hope you found the tips helpful so on your way back up make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification and now on your way back up make sure that you also check out that description. There's a number of different links in there and if you would like to bring some of this information to a school near you well then we have a link to our apps events website where we can bring these boot camps to your school. And in addition to this you'll find a link to our sponsor for this this video and that is Acer for Education. So go ahead and check them out as well. They have amazing devices that will really help your students and teachers in the classroom. This was another Tips and Tricks with Apps Events and Acer and I thank you for watching.